Everybody, it's Muscle Car Campy, and we are back with the most unbelievable story you've ever heard. We've got a 1971 Mustang convertible, 429 Ram Air under the hood, but that's only the start of it. This car was ordered by Ford's marketing department in the New York region to do special duty on the show circuit. In that department, they left precious little off the option list. Again, like we said, it's got the 429 Ram Air under the hood. C6 automatic, power top, tilt wheel, AM, FM, air conditioning. This thing is loaded. What it is also is extraordinarily rare. We'll tell you the whole story right now. As you know, this car was all new for 1971. It was the largest Mustang to that point. It was wider. The engine compartment was bigger so you could fit that 385 series V8 under the hood. It was a more luxurious car. It was also the first year for power windows. Ironically, this car doesn't have power windows. It's got just about everything else inside. Like I said, it's got air conditioning, tilt wheel. It's magnificent in there, but it really is impossibly rare. One of 42 Cobra Jet convertibles, but it's one of one if you break it down by red with the red interior and the white convertible top. I've always been in love with the 385 series Ford engine. It was the last big block to be developed in Detroit. Unbelievable cylinder head flow. You could take these things to well over 500 cubic inches. In fact, that was the plan back in the day when it was designed. Ford thought its cars were gonna be over 5,000 pounds and trucks over 6,000 pounds. So they came out with an engine that would be able to handle that. Of course, as we now know, there are no more cars and all the trucks are 6,000 pounds. So maybe they should bring it back. To get to Cobra Jet status, you got 11.3 to one compression. You did get a Rochester Quadrajet carb, which is unusual. This car has the Ram Air induction system. Horsepower was 370, torque a robust 460 foot-pounds. If you did opt for the Super Cobra Jet, you got a Holley, but these got the regular Quadrajet carburetor. You know, I know a lot of people think that the 71 Mustang was too big. I actually think it's just right. It kind of reminds me, size-wise, of my own 22 Mustang convertible. It's a great-looking car. It was really headed off in a more luxurious direction, but that was, that was where the market was headed to. We're talking about the end of the muscle car era. Insurance companies were cracking down on high horsepower. So it's not a surprise that the Mustang, the whole market, the 70 F bodies were much bigger. The 70 to 74 E body Mopars were way bigger, but these cars are really nice. This car is, sit there, 8,000 RPM tack, no red line, of course. Got the 120 mile an hour speedometer, AM, FM, you got a clock, gauges. I just love everything about this car. What is, like I said, it's really funny though, roll up windows, first year, power windows in a Mustang and a show car doesn't get them. Crazy, right? But you also have, of course, power top. Top goes down, the price goes up. This car was over $4,200 new. Insane, right? That was a lot of money for a pony car. But again, the vermilion interior, the red exterior is just a sexy, sexy beast. All right, sports fans, the day I've been waiting my whole life for to drive <laughs> this car. <laughs> and I didn't even know it. <laughs> the 52,000 miles original. 
Um, when I picked it up, uh, in fact, that article from 90 said it had around 52,000 miles. So, yep. So whoever had it before me didn't drive it hardly at all. All right, everybody. We're here with owner Mike Berardi. He owns this 71 Mustang. He owns a coupe, C-code coupe. Mike, you've got a lot of Mustangs and a lot of Mustang twos. <laughs> How did you get so involved with the Mustang hobby? You know, I've always had a Mustang, even uh, even in high school. My first car was a Mustang, actually a Mustang two. Yeah. And uh, so I've always loved the Mustang. And then after I started working for Ford Motor Company, um, I bought my first classic. It was a 1970 Mach One Cobra Jet 428. Wow. And uh, and then just kind of got the bug, and it just kept uh, kept going from there. So now I've got uh, seven seventy one four twenty nine fastbacks. I have a convertible that we're in now, and I have a coupe, and uh, and plenty of other cars to go along. Also, wow! But I know you also have a huge collection of Mustang twos. Um, you're kind of obsessed with them a little bit, perhaps <laughs> because it was your first car. Yeah, well, it, it was, um, and then uh, John Clore from Ford Performance, uh, he came to the collection one day, and uh, I had about 60 cars at that time, and he, you know, he kind of pounded on me a little bit, because he goes, you know, you don't have any Mustang dues, and I'm like, yeah, well, you know, and then uh, then I kind of started looking for the Mustang dues, and um you know, slowly over time, I bought a 74 with less than 3,000 original miles on it. Um, we have some Cobras, King Cobras. We got a 76 Stallion, a 75 Mach 1. And then um, I just bought a ultra-rare 77 Mustang II convertible. Uh, they only made 27 of those. And um, uh, right now, we only know of six of them that even exist. So... Um, just happened to uh, uh, Robert Kennedy, who wrote the Unbridled book, actually found that for me in Wisconsin. Wow. So, so I guess the only one you don't have is Farrah Fawcett's. <laughs> That's right. Hers was uh, white and blue. Mine is uh, white and red for that same year. So, Man. yeah. Is that kind of a bucket list car you'd like to find at some point? Uh, yeah. Actually, there's a 76. They made a real beautiful blue with white stripes, and yes. it's the only year, I yeah. think, that they had the blue, and uh, besides the King Cobra. Well, those cars really were very popular. I mean, you know, Pontiac was having a lot of success with the Trans Am, and when they brought back the Cobra too, I remember they had a GT350 in the end, a 65 or 66 GT350, and it was yep. a two-page spread, and people bought a lot of those cars. Yeah, yeah, there was. I mean, you, you think about all those years and everything. And I mean, Mustang's been popular, right? I mean, 60-year anniversary this year. So, you know, from the day it came out, even the Mustang too, that little thing, you know, they sold almost a half a million of them the first year out. Now, we had the oil embargo, right? And everybody was all about fuel economy. And I think, you know, back then we got a whopping like 18 or 20 miles per gallon, <laughs> which was really good. Well, and, uh, compared to a full-size Ford, which probably got six or eight miles per gallon, <laughs> maybe 10 on the highway. Right. That was living. Right, right. It was almost double. You know, nowadays, you know, your F-150 uh, gets uh, 20, 26 or 27 on the highway, right? So well, yeah. I was driving my 5.0 Coyote um, convertible 22. Set it to get the mileage, and man, at one point where I was just cruising on the highway about 80 miles an hour, I was getting 26, 27. It was insane. Yeah, yeah, they do get cars today get great gas miles, and you got the horsepower to go along with it, right? So we never thought we'd live like that, right? Oh, we no. always thought the performance was gone. Yeah, but here it is back again. I yeah. will say I do enjoy this car. Reminds me a lot of my first car, which was a '71. Barracuda convertible, you get a little bit of that cow shake. Oh yeah. And um, but it does ride nice, boy. You, you have this thing tuned pretty well. Yeah, it runs. It runs great. I mean, every time I uh, you know fire it up, it's ready to roll. And you know sometimes it'll sit for four years. And so you still you know modern tires though do get flat spotting, mm -hmm. right? So so usually you know the first 20 miles you get a little bit of a, a little more shake than normal, and then. 
you know, once uh, once you get it rolling along, you know, away it goes. So, yeah, and, yeah. and when you say once every four years, but that just speaks to the volume of your collection. And you do drive all the ones that are drivable. Yes. Um, one of the cars that you have that I am just, well, there's two, and they're pretty much identical. Uh, 69 Super Cobra Jet Mustang Coupe. It's a 430 year car, and you also own its twin. They yes. both came from the same dealership. The one that's in the restoration shop now was once raced by Bob Glidden, and then later he bought the car and campaigned it. Am I correct? Yeah, so that's right. So the dealer bought two identical cars 69 Super Cobra Jet Coupes with no frills, no nothing on them, and uh, 430 gears, one to drive on the road and one to drag race. And uh, so that car, the drag car, has been drag raced all its life. In fact, two of the three drivers are still alive, and I, I stay in touch with them. And um, they campaigned them, ran them uh, NHRA Super Stock class. And you're right, uh, Bob Glidden, as a matter of fact, uh, around 72, when he was going into the Pintos, the first time he tried to get his Pinto certified for NHRA, they declined him. So while the car was at Indy uh, for the Nationals, uh, they had just won the Nationals, the guys that owned the car, and Bob needed a car for about six months or so. He ended up uh, buying the car, and, um, and Dwayne, the guy that was uh, running the car, he had to go run to uh, Harold Stout RV up in Indiana. That's who um, was sponsoring Bob at the time for his cars. And uh, so Bob Glidden gave him his personal car. Um, Dwayne drove up to Indiana, got a check for $3,200, brought it back, gave Bob a car, and they brought the car and, and took the check back to the dealer in Ohio. I mean, you got the whole story. I mean, it's, it's, it's great when, uh, when uh, you got the history on the car and, and some of those drivers are still alive. So, yeah. yeah. In your collection, you have a great assortment of like I said, Fox Bodies, 65 to 73 Mustangs, Mustang 2s, you've got one of each Cobra R that I can see. Oh yeah, yeah, get each of those. Yeah. So you don't really discriminate, do you? you no, 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 basically, you know, we have all the pace cars, 64 and a half, uh, 79, 94, um, MIS pace car, we have a Daytona pace car. Um, and we go all the way up to 2022. I mean, I've got um, one of the new GT500 Heritage Editions. And um, um, actually, it's VIN number one. And uh, the company the company still takes uh, care of me. Do you have a 94 pace car? I do, yeah. Uh, that's a personal favorite of mine. I mean, maybe because I had just become editor of Muscle Mustangs magazine back then. And I remember going to the drive the ride and drive for the oh, program yeah. and I just thought those SN95s were terrific looking cars and yep. boy and you know what they sold like man yeah you know, they did the last Mustang to sell over 200,000 copies in a model year was the I believe the 2000 or the 2001 okay so they really were extremely popular and again you think back to the cars that kept the brand alive the Mustang 2 the SN95s it is a wonderful history over 60 years, and there's something to, to love about all of them. Yeah, there really is. In one of my uh, company cars, when I moved to, um, I think it was Cincinnati, um, was in 1994, and that was actually my uh, one of my company cars was a 94 Mustang. Back then, we I think we all had to order yellow for some odd reason or whatever, but. Um, it was a great car. I, I love that car. The one thing I liked, they were heavier than a Fox car. Oh yeah. But on the other hand, they were so much, so much better put together. Yeah. Well, I think you know when the uh, the convertibles, right? If I remember correctly, in '94, they made the convertible body, right? They made it specifically for the convertible. They didn't just cut the roof off. Right. So the cowl shake and things like that that we have with the foxes, most of that was gone. And uh, it really was a nice, stable car driving with the top down. Sure, and the 90, the 
79 to 93, that was never intended to be a convertible. Right, right. I mean... Well, the same with the Mustang too. that little uh, 77 that I have. They made, like I said, 27. They cut the top off, right? And uh, fabricated everything. And they were a limousine builder. And uh, uh, they made 27. And then, unfortunately, they went out of business. That convertible, that Mustang 2 convertible, new, was $6,600. And if I'm correct, Corvette, at the same year, was about the same price. I was going to just say, that's Corvette territory. Yeah, exactly right it is. And it might be the other reason why they only made 27 of them. It's a lot of money for a Mustang, too. It is. It is. Because I think they were around around $4,000, I think, um, if I remember right. Yeah. What's your favorite part of this particular car? This thing is just, obviously, the rarity is special. Yeah, and it's, you know what, it's the power. It really is the power. You've got, you got luxury, um, and you got, you got good power and stuff like that. And, you know, if you need to jump on it, whether you're entering the highway or taking off from a red light, flooring it, and just burning the tires off. Um, I like, I like the big body, and I like the 429. And, you know, these are kind of like Mustang 2s, right? You either love them or you hate them yes. because they are a big body. But, you know, when you get the suspension right and you get rid of all the old, uh, you know, rubber and all that kind of stuff, they ride like a dream, yeah. you know. And I just noticed something, and I don't know if you've even noticed this. The tack and the speedometer are both angled towards the driver. They are. Yeah, I never. I'm very driven, slight, very yes. slight. Yes, and the same with the three gauges right yeah. here. Yeah, I've same. driven several of these over the years, but I never noticed that before. Yeah, yep. And and when you say they're big, but you know, compared to today's offerings, they're not really that large. No, they. You know, and I think they get they get some of that because the '74, right, was tiny. Yes, and uh, or, or very small. And, and these were the big ones. And they are, I mean, when you put them next to a 69 or 70, they look larger, but when you put it next to them and you look at the inches, they're like two inches longer. Yeah, they're really not. Yeah, yeah it's no. not a huge, huge no. car. But it does have a big, you know, to put that 429 in, right? Yep. You needed more room up front. And yep. uh, and they uh, certainly, uh, certainly did that, so. Well, Mike, <laughs> this, you made my week, my year. <laughs> Obviously, just the rarity, of course, but it's a special car. These in the convertible, I'm a big ragtop guy. I love the feeling of the wind blowing through my bald spots. Um, <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> but the other thing people don't realize too: these 71 to 73 cars drive way nicer than a 65. Oh yeah. To sit to 70. Yeah, um, and I, and I've got early ones right in the collection and stuff. And 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 you're right; these are just a lot smoother and stuff like that. The other ones are. You know they're a little more harsh and things like that and they don't quite have the room and and um i mean they're fun to drive but they're not as easy as these are so, yeah. yeah yeah well mike thank you very much for the opportunity to just feature this car on the channel i'm i'm honored and i'm really appreciative of it because you, uh, you can just go now yeah you yeah just leave you go and take this and got the keys. take this back to you florida can, there you, you have go. the rental car what? all right everybody this is muscle car campy saying see you later Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button so you're notified every time a new video goes live. We've got more great Detroit iron coming, including perhaps one more from Mike's collection.